Hi everyone, uh, this is Keith Elliston at the Transmark Foundation. Uh, per usual, we'll spend a little bit of time here waiting for some people to, uh, to log on and we'll start at five minutes after the hour. Hello everyone, welcome to the uh, Transmark Foundation uh, monthly community call. Um, I just want to remind people that uh, these meetings are recorded uh, for offline viewing and you can find them on our uh, YouTube channel uh, which you can get to from the website. Uh, this is our monthly call. I'd like to thank everyone for joining and say good morning or good afternoon or good evening depending on, uh, on where you're calling in from. Uh, and uh, we'll take you through a little bit of what we're doing uh, overall and give you a quick update. So Kevin, if you can give us the first slide. Uh, the agenda for today's call uh, will take you through just a quick updates, uh, the monthly updates from the foundation, some of the key events and things that have been happening. Um, we will then uh, take you through a little bit of a review of the version 1.2 launch events and uh, the key next steps for the platform. Uh, then we'll uh, have a, an overview of the version 1.2 documentation and video demo projects. Uh, Rudy will take us through uh, a little bit on the Transmark rebranding that uh, you may have seen that's uh, rolling out now. Uh, and then we'll talk a bit about the, the 2014 annual meeting coming up in uh, a four weeks in Ann Arbor. And then we'll have some time for uh, questions and comments. Uh, next slide, Kevin. So uh, in terms of foundation updates, uh, the, big, the big news for the month has been the, uh, uh, the formal launch of version 1.2 of the platform. Uh, we had the uh, production release on August 1st, and in fact, uh, we've just recently had uh, the first patch to the, to the production release that's uh, it's been released as well. Um, so the, the platform is all updated. The demo platform is available. Uh, you can get to that from the foundation website. And anyone who wants to try out the platform, any of the new features, there's a, a full demonstration version there that's available for people to use uh, and access. Uh, in terms of the launch activities, we had two uh, launch activities, one on September 9th, the other on the 10th. There's a two-hour program uh, in which we went through uh, the various features of the platform, uh, had various uh, contributors demonstrate those, those key functions, and uh, you know, had a, a general overall uh, discussion and review. Um, in terms of the launch, we have documentations and tutorials in development. Uh, there's a rebranding uh, both of the, of the foundation and of the platform that's underway. And uh, we've kicked off a training program that is in development that will be uh, highlighted at the annual meeting this year. 
Uh, the annual meeting is coming up. Uh, that's October 14th to 16th in Ann Arbor, Michigan, hosted by the University of Michigan. Uh, the, the agenda is, uh, is nearly complete. Well, we have some uh, fine keynote speakers that will be taking you through, uh, and registration is, uh, is filling up quickly, so uh, it's uh, time to, to uh, make sure you get your registration in, and we'll take you through the details there. Uh, the 2015 membership drive is underway. Uh, just a reminder that uh, the Transmark Foundation is a member-driven uh, nonprofit organization. Uh, we'll be reaching out to our uh, existing members uh, for renewals and uh, in the process of recruiting new members. So if your organization is not yet a member of the foundation, uh, I encourage you to contact me and uh, we can work on, on making your organization a member. Uh, in terms of hiring, we've been uh, recruiting uh, a European community manager. We have over 20 applications uh, currently uh, for this that we're now working through. Our goal is to, uh, this fall, uh, identify and hire a dedicated European community manager to help us uh, and to augment the activities that Kevin Smith has been uh, providing for us here in North America and overall. In addition, we've been recruiting volunteers. And uh, you'll, you'll hear about two projects that are, are being run by our volunteers uh, currently. Um, we're also looking for some help in the areas of business development and, and other aspects of the foundation. So if you have some time or interest in working with the foundation, uh, please feel free to, to get in contact with Kevin or myself and uh, we can help you uh, contribute to the foundation uh, activities. In terms of governance, uh, we have a board meeting coming up. Uh, it'll be our uh, second in-person board meeting of the year uh, in Ann Arbor. Uh, that will be held on the 14th. Uh, it will also be available uh, you know, for uh, board members uh, via GoToMeeting so that there is a virtual participation option as well. Uh, our executive committee continues to meet monthly. Our next uh, meeting is coming up this Friday. Uh, the executive committee, just as a reminder, is our chairman of the board, Gil Ullman, uh, along with the chairman of our nominations committee, Matteo Di Tommaso and the chairman of our finance committee, Brett Davis. Uh, so if you have any issues that uh, need board attention, please either get to me or, or one of those uh, executive committee members. Uh, what I'd like to do next is take you through uh, a bit of the activities around the version 1.2 launch. This has been a, a really exciting time for the community uh, and for the foundation uh, and for everyone involved. Uh, the development of 1.2 has been, uh, I think, a watershed event for the platform. Uh, bringing together uh, over 11 different branches of the code into a single code base, uh, having a platform that functions now seamlessly on Oracle and Postgres, uh, depending on what your uh, database of preference is, uh, that has uh, now uh, online demo versions, uh, virtual machine images that can be downloaded, uh, well-tested install scripts for, for deployment, um, and then uh, we're now in the process of making uh, a large set of data sets available for people to use in that, uh, that context. So it's a real watershed uh, event and a watershed uh, platform for the community. We had two uh, launch events where we brought people together to really highlight the, uh, the key features of version 1.2. One was held at the University of Michigan, uh, our host site for the annual meeting, on September 9th. Um, we had a two-hour meeting there. There were people present on site as well as a, a large number of people from uh, uh, the webinar uh, virtual attendance. And then we had a second, uh, a second launch event for Europe uh, held at IDBS's offices in London on September 10th, uh, again running through some of the key features. Um, the video uh, for this can be found uh, on the Transmark Foundation website. Uh, you can go through, and if you didn't have a chance to attend, uh, the video uh, of, of those events is there. Uh, we had overall about 130 attendees uh, to the events, and uh, what I'd like to do is encourage people uh, you know, to to reach out to people that are interested in having them join. Go back one slide, Kevin. Um, I think overall, um, what is what's really key about the, the launch events was really the kickoff of the adoption and broader um, usage of the platform. Uh, and I think as an open source platform, uh, those who have adopted and are using the platform uh, should really reach out and, and help grow our community by making others aware of the platform, its utility, and, and how they're using it. Uh, as a part of that, uh, we become aware of various uh, presentations that people are making and other kinds of events. Um, if you have events that are of interest, if you're giving a presentation on your implementation, please send that information to us um, at the foundation and we'll include that on our website and uh, work with you on uh, helping people become more broadly aware of the platform and, and what it can do. 
as again, I think this is a, a real watershed event for the for the community. And uh, what we'd like to do is make sure that we're getting that word out to the broader translational research community and, and growing the adoption of the platform. Thanks, Kevin. Next slide. Uh, just to remind people of the process and uh, and where we've gotten to. Um, this was a, a real, uh, I would say, monumental development task. The concept of bringing together 11 distinct branches of a code base and an open source platform on two distinct database platforms uh, was a real challenge, and the developer community really rose to that challenge. Uh, we initiated this effort at our annual meeting uh, in November of last year in Paris, which was hosted by Synophy, uh, where we prioritized the features there. And we prioritized those features because we didn't know how many we would be able to get into the platform. And what I'm happy to say is when we went through those features, every feature that we prioritized as a one, a two, or a three, in fact, made it into the platform and is there available for use today. Uh, the foundation then worked with the, the, the community to develop a series of hackathons and testathons, both to, to get the code uh, integrated and working together. Uh, there was one in Boston in February, one in London in April, uh, with some key sponsors that helped us with those programs. Uh, the sponsors included Sanofi and, and a number of others. Um, and then we organized a series of testathons to get people engaged in testing that code base, identifying and reporting various issues uh, to make sure that we had a working code base. Uh, that was the first testathon was June 3rd through 5th, um, and then the second was uh, 10th through 12th. Given that we were involving a much broader aspect of the community, we brought people together virtually uh, for these, and in fact had the first set of virtual hackathons or testathons uh, in our community, uh, which in fact were, were quite successful. Based upon the development and some of the key challenges that we had in the development overall, uh, we decided to do a community-wide testing release on June 20th uh, uh, of this year. Uh, and that the goal there was to make sure we could broaden that testing community, to broaden the, the incorporation of data resources uh, from across the community, to be able to fully uh, evaluate tests and report issues with that for the development community to address. Uh, in doing so, um, uh, we organized uh, three sprint debugging cycles focused on different key aspects of the platform. Uh, they were focused uh, two weeks on data loading and ETL development, uh, two weeks on functional testing and debugging, and then uh, two weeks focused on implementation testing and debugging. This resulted in our production release on August 1st. Uh, there was additional work done on that production release uh, in preparation for the launch. And uh, we issued, I think it was last Friday, Kevin, the, uh, the, patch, the first patch release of the platform. Right. Friday on and, uh, September 12th. Yep. On September 12th. There we go. So uh, it's been, a, a, I think, a really uh, rapid development cycle. It's been uh, an involvement of over 100 different people from across the community in, in uh, testing, debugging, uh, contributing data, uh, contributing various resources to the platform. And what we have is really a, a, a revolutionary platform for translational research. And I think we all should be uh, you know, really proud of, of the effort that the community was able to put together to, to bring this forward. Next slide. Uh, this is my, my favorite uh, view of, of what happened over the course of the development of version 1.2. And it really shows the, the uh, I think, the, the value of bringing people together in, in the community to, to work on the platform and grow it together. Um, from the, the time we kicked off the annual meeting uh, to the first initial set of hackathons, we had a relatively low level of activity. But once we brought people together, got them working together, uh, focused around that, you can see how the development activity and the, the issue testing uh, and, and reporting really kicked off. And uh, through the, the set of, of hackathons, we can see that development focused around the developer community. But it was really the opening up the testathons and having the, the community-wide testing release that, that kicked us into this exponential growth, both in terms of issues reported and in issues resolved. Uh, and what we have is, is to me, it's, this is the beauty of an open source community coming together, working together to, to build uh, a platform that everyone can use and everyone can collaborate on. If you look at this overall, um, the green line here is the set of issues that were assigned and resolved. Uh, the red bar here is the set of issues that were reported and uh, continue to, uh, to remain in the system. This red area, in fact, is what I call the, the development gap. Uh, currently, we have uh, still about 80 issues uh, that are left unresolved that we're working with the developer community to, uh, to address. 
Um, one of the things I want to make sure is that the, the scope of this line continues to, to be positive uh, so that we can have additional development resource dedicated to, to moving the platform forward. So as your teams go into implementation on 1.2, as you discover any kind of bugs or issues, <clears throat> as you fix those issues, make sure you work with the, the foundation, uh, work with the JIRA platform that we put in place to make sure that those bugs are reported. And as you address those issues, those in fact uh, uh, are, are um, identified and incorporated into the code base. And what we'll be doing is issuing uh, regular patches uh, to the platform to ensure that these uh, these resolved issues are incorporated into the code base as we go forward. The key thing we have with Transmart version 1.2 is a single code base for the foundation and the community to grow from. And we need to continue to work with that single code base. Next slide, Kevin. So the, the key next steps, uh, as, as Kevin pointed out, uh, the version 1.2, uh, the first patch was released on September 12th. This patch incorporates um, the sets of changes that were adopted since the production platform was released on August 1st uh, includes a number of key things that were identified even as people were putting together demonstrations for the, the launch platform. Uh, and so it's, a, it's important for us to continue to release uh, updated patches of the platform. Uh, Kevin uh, is, will continue to coordinate those aspects and Terry Weymouth at, at Michigan will continue to provide a real leadership role in making sure that that happens seamlessly for you. So expect to see additional patch releases in the future. We're working on the schedule for that, uh, but uh, we're really committed to making sure that, that the platform continues to grow and that as we identify these, these key things that need to be addressed, they are addressed and those make it into the single code base for people working forward. Uh, another key thing that we've implemented starting since uh, version 1.1 is to release a set of virtual machine images. Uh, the key challenge here is, is the, the Transmart platform is an enterprise plat class platform. This is not a, a simple platform to install uh, like you might um, you know, install Linux on your desktop uh, or your laptop. Um, so it's, a, it's an enterprise class platform. It includes a, a large scale database as well as an application layer uh, and uh, the, you know, a series of, of uh, web services as well. And then there's the issue of content, uh, not just the content that one can use to demo various features, but loading your own content. To make it easier for people to get a sense of whether Transmart can meet their needs and can work effectively for them, uh, not only have we put up a demonstration platform that's hosted by BT Global Services uh, uh, that's available from the website, but if you want, you can download a virtual machine and uh, run that on your own systems. And uh, I will admit to the fact that I, I downloaded uh, a version of the platform into VirtualBox onto one of my Macintoshes and was able to run Transmart there. Uh, it took a while to download the virtual machine images. These are not small. Uh, but this is a very effective way for you to test the, uh, the, uh, the environment within your own internal environment on platforms that, uh, that you want to run this on. So I think this is a really tremendous uh, lowering of the barriers to entry uh, for people to, to get into the platform, understand the platform, utilize the platform, is uh, the demonstration version and the virtual machines. Another key issue for the adoption of the platform is the development of documentation. Uh, and uh, I, I would still say that the, the Transmart platform is an expert user platform. Uh, it's one in which um, you know, a naive uh, person coming into it is not going to find it uh, completely seamless to use. And so having a really good set of documentation and, uh, is essential. But we've gone to the next step, which is uh, to work on developing uh, video demos that one can walk through with a script so that you can sit down <clears throat> with your virtual machine image or with your, your demo platform that's available uh, on the web and run through a scripted uh, exercise to become more familiar with the platform. Uh, these are key things that we think are really important. Uh, the projects to develop these are currently underway. Um, the documentation project is being coordinated by Eric Kaplan uh, who will take you through that. And the video demo project is being coordinated by uh, Alex Pepa, who will, uh, you'll hear more from in the near future. Um, they will be reaching out to you for the contributions of documentation or demos or scripts that you've already developed. Uh, our goal is to leverage the community and putting these together and then to provide the incremental resource we need to make these into professional products that we can all take advantage of. So they will be reaching out to you. Uh, please respond positively and uh, work with them to make sure that we have the best products we can. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot of the, the finished documentation and demos at the annual meeting uh, where we'll really be taking those uh, forward and presenting those to the community. 
Uh, in terms of release process and cycle, as I mentioned, we still have the development gap. There are 80 unresolved bugs. Uh, we are recruiting developers to address those bugs. Uh, if you have some time and effort to put there, please let us know. Uh, contact Terry Weymouth or Kevin Smith. Uh, those are the best ways. Everything is coordinated through our JIRA platform, which you can get to at jira.transmartfoundation.org. All the issues are there. If you need to report bugs, uh, they're there. If you want to take on a bug or you're going to fix a bug, please assign yourself there and work on that. If you don't have a, a username and password for making assignments and, and whatnot, uh, please contact uh, Terry Weymouth, uh, who can help uh, assign those to you. Uh, but we do want to continue to have developers focus on this. We've, we've gotten through the sprint of 1.2, but now we really want to continue to make this a robust and uh, capable platform for the community. Uh, Terry Weymouth will be our release coordinator for helping us develop and release patches. Uh, and you'll see uh, a series of patches as we come through and resolve these issues uh, over the coming months. So if you're concerned about where those bugs might be, or you have uh, patches to those, you know, Terry is your guy to coordinate with, and the JIRA platform is the platform to use to accomplish that. Next slide, Kevin. I tried to advance it on my computer. It wouldn't work. Uh, what I'd like to do is, is uh, turn this over now to talk a little bit about the documentation of video projects. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Eric Kaplan has joined us uh, to focus on developing uh, this documentation. Now, that doesn't mean that Eric is going to be developing all the documentation from scratch on his own. Uh, what this really means is that we need to get contributions from the community so that Eric can work with those and really serve as an editor more than a contributor to this. Um, so everyone who has developed a key feature or key aspects or has documentation, you know, please respond to Eric's requests and, and work with him. Uh, Eric's background is uh, he's a, a professional writer. Uh, he's a founder of BioPractices. Uh, he's worked with, uh, with a, a number of, of very good groups in the, in the field. Uh, the Lewin Group, which I, I've worked with in the past, uh, McKinsey, uh, with Pfizer, Levy Shaw, I mean, really top groups in the industry. Um, his background is <clears throat> a PhD in the history of science from the University of Michigan, and um, he is very active in developing uh, white papers and, and various kinds of documentation and, and uh, writing projects across the industry, uh, really you know, key in helping drive uh, opinions and, and uh, uh, content across the industry. So we're very pleased to have Eric join us uh, to, to help us coordinate the documentation project and to work with the foundation going forward. And what I'd like to do is turn it over to Eric and, and let him take you through the documentation project and what we're doing now. Eric? Hi. Um, the next slide, please. Hello, everybody. I'm really delighted to be joining the foundation in its efforts to you know, move Transmart forward. I think this is just a terrific opportunity and a project that really embodies the best of um, open science. Um, I'm also here in, to remind everybody that while Keith eloquently explained the beauty of doing an open source project, my task is to deal with some of the parts of an open source project that are not so beautiful, which is namely hurting everyone who has contributed to the platform into a coherent group that will enable us to provide effective documents, videos, scripts, so that the end user community, while all experts, will have a, an appropriate set of guidance documents and user guides in order to really be able to come up to speed as quickly as possible on version 1.2. In order to do that, um, both I and Alexandra Papa, who's working on the video project, are going to be reaching out to a number of you requesting your help and more importantly requesting whatever documents, videos, scripts and what you consider other relevant materials to users that we can then, as Keith said, turn into much more professional quality um, tools and guidance and documents, release notes, um, whatever, so that people can again come up to speed as quickly as possible. Um, we're going to start small, but ultimately we hope this will grow a lot bigger. In, by the October meeting, our plan and our aspiration is to have complete documentation, videos, and scripts for what were originally considered the top one, number one priorities for the new release, which are eight separate aspects. I apologize 
that I don't have that slide in front of you right now. So in order to be the most helpful, when you receive our emails requesting your support or time to speak, it would be great if you could respond promptly and we'll work very closely with you in order to um, make sure that everybody knows exactly what they need to deliver. The one other issue which is important to bear in mind is that for documents that were produced for which private sector companies currently own the copyrights, we'll also need a process by which we can turn them over to sort of common, common commons open source documents that um, our user community can use. I think Keith could probably speak more eloquently on that particular point because I'm just coming up to speed on that particular issue. Um, a number of you will, will probably, not even probably, will definitely be receiving an email um, from Alex and me later this week um, with specific requests for documents. And as I said, it would be great if you could um, respond promptly. Um, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me directly. Thanks so much. Let me add to what you, uh, what you said there, uh, Eric. I think it's a very good point. As, a, as an open source community, one of the things we do have to be cognizant of is the licensing on various kinds of content. Uh, with respect to the platform, uh, everyone who contributes code through GitHub, it's part of the uh, GPL version 3, and that license is automatically added to contributions uh, that are made through GitHub. With respect to the documentation, uh, what we'd like to do is either have you assign the copyright to the foundation, or if you can contribute things under the Creative Commons Attribution License, the CCBY, uh, that's the best way to make these contributions to the foundation. And we can modify those and everything the foundation releases in terms of content and videos, etc., will be using the Creative Commons Attribution License, the CCD license. So this is, uh, we think, the most effective way to deal with, uh, with the documentation and with uh, the video content and scripts is to make it you know, very widely available, very open. Uh, but if you send us something uh, without a copyright notice, uh, without a license, uh, without assigning us a copyright, we in fact cannot use that. Uh, there is, uh, due to the Berne Convention, an implied copyright on any work of authorship, uh, and without permission we cannot use it. So uh, that is one of the key reasons that Eric uh, has brought this issue up. Uh, I think in terms of the, the video and tutorial program, Rudy, did you want to take us through that a little bit? Sure. Um, I can do that. Uh, Alex Papa has also joined the project as the project manager, uh, and so similarly to the documentation, uh, we are putting together a set of videos and uh, tutorials uh, around the key features uh, that are in the platform, uh, certainly focusing initially on the new features in 1.2, but then expanding to cover really the, the whole set of capabilities. Uh, there are a set of videos, uh, tutorials that are put together by the University of Michigan, uh, a group um, uh, for 1.1, and those are available out on our YouTube site. Um, but uh, we're we're going to be updating those as well. Uh, but we're really hoping to have a, a nice set that when you you're looking to do a particular thing, you can come and, and find you know a, a, a video that includes a walkthrough, uh, actually which buttons to push. Uh, it'll have some standard data sets that you can you know, that'll be available on our demo site that you can try it yourself, and so you can actually get your hands in and try to do things. Um, and that's you know that's part of what what we're putting together. Uh, on the next slide, um, I also um, mentioned that um, we are looking for for help. And one of the things that would be really helpful, you know, the tutorials are great, the documentation, you know, is, is very important to have, but we're also looking at a little bit higher level in terms of looking for scientific stories, a use case. You know, if you want to solve this scientific problem, here's how you come to the platform. This is the type of data that you need to have and that you can load, and then here's how you actually solve that problem. So a much more of a solution focus. Uh, that you know you can really come in and, and really you know one of our goals with, with this, the platform now that we're at this point you know and have this level of capability is to really broaden the usage and, and trying to you know guide pe you know groups and, and how can they use the platform to do things maybe that they hadn't thought about doing before so we're going to be constantly looking for uh, these these interesting scientific stories that we can then turn into you know little five ten minute um, uh, 
videos that we can you know, again uh, make available to, to everyone. So that's that's our pitch, and, and again, your help would be greatly appreciated. I'm going to continue uh, now and, and talk a little bit about rebranding. Uh, you may you can see these slides are a bit different um, than what you've seen from us in the past, and if you've been to the website, you'll see that we've uh, completely redone the website. Um, we made the decision with with uh, 1.2 coming out, such a, a big release for us and, and uh, really a, a, a huge step forward. Uh, our annual meeting is about to, to come in, in about four weeks. Uh, we thought this would be really a good time, you know, 18 months or so after the foundation was what itself was founded. Um, this would be a, a, a really good time to, to, you know, think about our brand and, and do something fresh and something new. And so we decided to go through the exercise to rebrand our look uh, and feel on the foundation. Um, coupled with a, a renewed set of effort to, to really put a lot of the important information together. Uh, next slide. Um, I want to emphasize that, you know, it's the same foundation, it's the same goals, same mission. You know, we haven't changed uh, what we're, we're trying to accomplish, uh, but uh, we have an approved platform and we're really just looking for a fresh look. And so there's a set of things that we've now gone through and started to, um, you know, put in place that you'll see. Uh, a lot of it's in place today, and some of it will be coming uh, over the coming weeks. Uh, next slide. Uh, we did design a new logo. Uh, this was crowdsourced, trying to keep our open uh, source, open uh, foundation uh, aspects. And so we, we worked with a, a group, and they uh, made a lot of contributions. Uh, and this is the new logo for the foundation itself. Uh, next is the. We also designed a logo for the platform, uh, and so you'll be seeing these on all the materials uh, as we go forward. Next slide. Uh, we did create a new website, uh, as we said, and um, you know uh, I won't uh, go through it here, but I, I encourage you to go through and, and look at it. Um, it, it has a lot of um, information. Uh, it is uh, very dynamic. We're trying to keep it up to date. Uh, with, with changes as things happen, uh, with uh, information about you know the, the foundation and the history and and some of the aspects of uh, who we are and what we do, uh, news events, keeping the news events up to date and what's happening, uh, information on all of the foundation events, past and present. So, for example, you can go here and look at uh, what we did at BioIT World uh, in the spring and some of the things that happened there. Uh, we have a full membership um, uh, set of, of um, information talking about members, how to become a member, uh, what does it take, um, and uh, we'll be adding here you know, member news and, and information as we go forward. Uh, community is, is so important to us, and so again, we're doing a lot to, um, you know, to describe what we're doing across the community, uh, and also a lot, obviously, for the, um, uh, for the platform, a lot of information. We've also started now a new uh, newsletter. Uh, we call it our email blast. This is coming to you by email. Uh, next slide. Uh, you should have gotten the first version already, uh, and you'll be getting another one uh, later this week, probably. Um, we are doing this monthly and sometimes bi-weekly right now. There's a lot of information to communicate uh, on the platform, on the, the upcoming um, uh, annual meeting, and so you'll be getting this uh, to, to just remind you of, of things that are happening. Uh, as an electronic newsletter, it's nice because we can put links in and you know, point you back to the right places uh, on the website. Next slide. We are also working hard to broaden our visibility. Uh, you know, getting getting out there and, and you know going to you know take, getting recognition for the conferences that we attend, the presentations and publications that we have. It's not something we've put um, enough attention to, I think, in the past. And so, for example, conferences. The next slide. Um, we, we're trying to keep track of where are we uh, attending and presenting information on either the, the foundation or the platform itself, but even more importantly, uh, scientific works that, that are important for the scientific merit, but are, that are taking advantage of the platform uh, and showing how it can be used uh, in our quest for you know, driving translational medicine. Uh, the next slide just shows that on the site now, you can, if you have an article that you have a, a published work that you've seen and read and you think the, the rest of the community would be interested, put as much information on this form and send it to us and we'll look it up and get a link to it on the website. The same for presentations. As you, as you see these things, please don't hesitate to, to pop these in for us and uh, we'll, we'll take it from there and get the, the word out. 
Um, we have established a YouTube channel. Uh, YouTube has all of the these community webinars are posted there now for 2014 and a couple going back into 2013. We have the um, uh, the tutorials that were created at Michigan already, and some of the new tutorials. This is where they'll land, uh, and the, uh, the the annual meeting from Paris. We have the recordings. Most of those are up there now, uh, and even the launch event from just uh, you know just last week. Uh, all of that's already uploaded on the YouTube channel, and so you can go there and watch these at your leisure. Next slide. Uh, we've been working. Uh, Dan Hausman had started um, the, um, the LinkedIn group, and so we've been working with Dan, and now we're uh, actively working on uh, with this LinkedIn group and getting the using this to communicate. And so, as we have uh, information, I've been posting you know, things here to the YouTube group. As you can see, we have over 500 members here uh, on this LinkedIn group, and you know, again, we we commit to to trying to keep this uh, up and running. Uh, there's an opportunity here for talking about you know promotions. If you're you know if you have something to promote, uh, you can you can post it here yourself. Uh, if you have jobs you want to talk about, you want to communicate with other members. Um, this is a community uh, posting board that that you can use, uh, and LinkedIn has is uh, really uh, one of the key um, places that people go for their social media now for professional activities. Uh, next slide. And of course, we're we're tweeting. We're tweeting as much as we can. You know, as as we get things, we now have you know over 250 people following us. Uh, I, I posted something about our hotels for the annual meeting, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, and uh, I had 100 you know 100 people read it within the first couple of hours. So it's it's really exciting to be able to have these these conduits to get information out to you. So I will be you know dual posting, triple posting where I can, you know, as wherever we can, so that you can have access to the different. Um, uh, information that we have. So that's our rebranding activity. Uh, it's it's um it's been a lot of fun, uh, and so you'll uh, you'll continue to see things roll out as we go forward here. I'd also like to now talk about the annual meeting. Uh, it's very important that we we focus on this. It's just four weeks away. Uh, we've got uh, people registering. The, the the registrations are filling up. We have a, a very nice program that have come has come together. I'd like to give you a, just a quick overview of where we are uh, with that. Uh, next slide. Uh, it is going to take place on October 14th to 16th uh, at the hosted by the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, uh, and um, registrations have been open today. Uh, and you know, a lot of you know, there are still a few opportunities for submitting papers. There are more opportunities for posters that you can submit, uh, and also some sponsorship uh, possibilities, which I'll talk about in a minute. Next slide. Um, we have um, well, there will be four keynote addresses, uh, 20 talks by community members. They'll be focused on either scientific or plat or the the platform uh, pieces of the uh, of, of aspects of the the foundation. Uh, and um, again, a lot of uh, very interesting talks and you know uh, talks coming from uh, academia, from from uh, scientific foundations, from um, uh, from. Uh, uh, industry, so a lot of uh, a good you know papers that have come come in and that we have uh, available. There there are a few spots possibly available if you have something burning that you would like to present, but um, these are really filled up quite quickly. The three C committees, code content and community, will each hold their their meetings uh, as well as sessions with their working groups, and so there'll be a, a se session set aside just for these uh, for these committee meetings. There'll be a poster competition, so you know if uh, if you're interested and you have a poster, we'll, we will be accepting posters uh, uh, for another couple weeks. Uh, and so please feel free to, to submit posters again on the website. You can submit these. And then there will be a challenge hackathon. Actually, we're going to have two topics, I think. And uh, again, we'll be uh, announcing that in another day or so. Um, we will have a reception on the first night celebrating the 1.2 platform. Um, and um, we will also have an award ceremony at that time, recognizing people who uh, have been major contributors to the uh, to this platform. And then on the the, the second night on the Wednesday evening, there will be a uh, annual meeting dinner uh, that everyone is invited to. Uh, please register. You know it's important to get your registrations in as soon as you can, so that we can plan uh, and have the best event that we can have. Next slide. In terms of some of the details, we have uh, three. Uh, I can tell you about three keynotes already. Uh, Professor Matthias Kretzler from the University of Michigan, our host, uh, is going to be presenting some of his exciting uh, research uh, that he uh, in an area of, in, of disease mechanisms um, and uh, how you know he views the, the platform uh, and his, his interest um, uh, in 
working with us, and working with it. Uh, Paul Aviak, Aviak, who has presented before, he gave a very in, uh, exciting talk at the uh, at BioAT World. Uh, we're now uh, he's going to be giving a, a keynote, uh, and we'll be able to go into more detail about uh, his activity and, and really some of the the very far-reaching uh, and and uh, 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 stimulating uses of the platform that uh, you know maybe some of us hadn't even thought of before. So Paul will give a great talk, and then Cal Collins, the CEO of Open Clinical. We'll talk about uh, open source development and innovation and, and the open clinic community. Again, we think all three of these will be very exciting talks for us to, to hear about uh, during the meeting. Next slide. Uh, I won't go through all these, but you can see, you know, the, the, this is just a few of the, the, the speakers that we've got uh, included. Uh, just to give you an idea of the breadth uh, and types of things that we'll be uh, hearing about uh, from specific projects uh, at uh, some of the pharma companies and, and maybe them working with some of their partners, uh, some of the academic activities which we think is of uh, particular interest, uh, et cetera. So, you know, we think this will, will provide a, a, a very interesting breadth uh, for everyone actually to, to have a, a, a very uh, stimulating time, but also uh, we'll have some fun as well. Next slide. We do have a sponsors program. We've got several sponsors uh, already booked up, including a uh, gold sponsor, and, and a number uh, of the uh, events are already laid out. But there are opportunities to uh, to do to still become a sponsor. This gives you a lot of, of interesting, hopefully uh, interesting things for you in terms of maybe do a small presentation or you know getting access to uh, you know putting information in our booklet that we'll be present uh, publishing for the event. Uh, so please, if you're interested in becoming a sponsor, uh, please let me know or, or contact Keith. Next slide. <clears throat> And then uh, additional activities, you know, we are going to have an awards program, so uh, for we're going to recognize uh, some of the people who really were instrumental in uh, uh, bringing the platform to, uh, to this version 1.3 and getting it out the door. If you know of people in your group or in groups that you were working with during the process of developing uh, the, the, this release, um, please uh, let us know. We, we set up a, a site, awards at trendsmartfoundation.org. Uh, these will all be the nominations will be confidential, but the uh, we will have uh, we will be selecting you know award winners, and these will be presented at a reception um, the first night um, at the at the meeting. And so um, during the celebration of the we will have the awards, and we'll also have a poster session going. So that'll take place on the first night, Tuesday night, and then the during the second night we will have a group dinner with a keynote. Um, where we'll all again be able to gather and have some fun uh, and uh, socialize. So please, um, please register if you haven't registered. Um, please also book your hotels. The hotel blocks uh, you can only hold them for a certain length of time, and the blocks are, are, are won't be held uh, after this week. But uh, hopefully, if there's rooms available, the the conference rates that we've negotiated will continue to be available. Uh, next slide. Uh, all this information is on the website, so please uh, go there and check it out. Uh, and certainly, if you have any questions, uh, comments, etc., uh, let us know. So now we'd like to open up. Okay, go ahead. That's great. Uh, let me just uh, emphasize with respect to to the sponsorship program for one. Um, you know, registration for the conference is free. Um, uh, I wish it was free for the foundation to run, but the sponsorship program you know, helps us defray the cost of this. And so if, if your group wants to help participate in that, you know, please let us know. And I think there's some really good marketing opportunities there for various groups. Um, so there's, uh, that's filling up, but uh, I think there's room for more, and we certainly uh, would like to help defray the cost for the, for the program. Uh, secondly, with respect to the awards, um, we expect to give out a number of, of key awards, and please send nominations you know, for anything that you think is, is reasonable. Um, our goal is really to celebrate the contributions of the community and its various members uh, overall. And the foundation, we have uh, some ideas. <coughs> Excuse me. It's allergy season here in Boston. Um, uh, we have some ideas, but we really want to hear your ideas and have you nominate people uh, across that, and then we can, we can recognize their contributions. So that's very important. Uh, with that, I'd like to, to open things up uh, for any kind of questions and comments. Um, in the GoToMeeting panel, you can raise your hand if you'd like to make a comment um, uh, or ask a question verbally. And if you'd like to post a question in the question box, we can also address those. So let me open that up. Uh, I'd just like to say thanks to, to Kevin Smith, who uh, 
put all this together for the community meeting and for, for helping us as a community manager with all this. So thanks, Kevin. Uh, I see an annual meeting question from Gil. Uh, at the annual meeting, will we reveal or encourage discussion about additional features of the value for 1.3 or 2.0? Uh, that's an excellent question, Gil. Uh, what the annual meeting does for us, as, as we do, uh, you know, the second time, we get together once in the spring, typically at the BioIT World meeting, and then in the fall at our annual meeting. Uh, but our working groups come together, and one of the key things in talking with EK and with Jay Bergeron uh, that the code committee is taking on is really roadmap and architecture. And you should hear from them shortly about being involved in these discussions. Uh, Kays von Bakov has also been involved in, in these discussions, and so there will be a lot of active discussion both ahead of the meeting and uh, at the meeting. So uh, there will be a lot of discussion about that overall, Gil, absolutely. Uh, that's a very key topic for us. You know, getting to 1.2 has, has been really critical for the foundation and the community. And uh, uh, we think, think that you know, really growing the adoption of 1.2 is, is the immediate goal of the foundation, uh, but also really catalyzing the community's thoughts about where the, the, pro, the platform should go is, is, is also quite critical. Um, I see a question from Brian Athey. Uh, we want everyone to know that we warmly welcome everyone to the October annual meeting in Ann Arbor. Uh, Gil and Brian are, are the key sponsors uh, for the foundation annual meeting at University of Michigan. And uh, I have to say that working with them, it's been fantastic. All the, the facilities they're making available, the work they've been doing on logistics, you know, with Kevin as well, so that we have Gil, Brian, and Kevin uh, that are really uh, doing the yeoman's work and bringing this together. And uh, I think they're very excited about bringing the Transmark community together to Ann Arbor, which I'll point out uh, in, in February of 2013, uh, we brought everyone together there, and that was the, uh, really the basis for founding uh, the foundation. Uh, was that uh, an early meeting at the uh, University of Michigan. So thanks, Brian and Gil and Kevin, for, uh, for hosting the meeting. We really appreciate that. Uh, any hands raised? I don't see any hands raised. I don't see any, any questions. Anyone like to make any comments? Uh, I'm looking for, I don't see hands raised at all. So, Kevin, did you have any comments that you wanted to make um, before we go? No, I, I would just like to, to emphasize, I think, what you, Rudy, and others have already communicated. Our annual meeting is just four weeks away. The annual meeting, the success of that meeting, it will be um, largely dependent upon community involvement. So if you haven't yet already uh, registered, please do so at the earliest opportunity. Um, and I think as Rudy has said, also among your colleagues, please help us to promote this uh, important uh, get-together that really helps set the trajectory of where the community is going to be going over the next year. Yeah, and to add to that, Kevin, I, I know that we, we all know uh, different groups that are, are not actively involved with the foundation that are using the platform and engaged in working on the platform. And reach out to them and, and encourage them to come join us uh, at, at, the, at the annual meeting and to tell us a bit about what they're doing. Uh, this is an open community, and we certainly want to, to hear about the different kinds of ideas and, and experiences people are having working with the platform. Yeah. So, so, Keith, I would like to make one other specific comment, and that is with respect to the presentations. This year, um, we are, are working to organize a, a poster session, and so even though we've lined up four keynote speakers and, and 20 um, uh, presentations uh, that are either scientifically oriented or technically oriented. It would be fabulous for if each organization that is represented at this meeting would bring a poster to really uh, share with the community what they're doing at, at their particular um, um, uh, organization. So University of Michigan will uh, definitely uh, present one or more posters. Uh, I'm sure that there, there are others, but uh, please visit the, the Foundation website. Please put together um, uh, some idea of a, a poster that you would like to present, and it would be fabulous if we saw 20, 30 posters presented in Ann Arbor just four weeks from now that really showcased all the work that the community at large is doing and the innovation that is going on at particular groups.
Excellent. Okay, I don't see any further. Oh, I do see one. Okay. Um, Gil reminded me that we had a, a, a small uh, issue of the executive committee meeting said it was on 822. We had that one. Uh, I forgot to update that. I, uh, our next executive committee meeting is uh, coming this coming Friday. Uh, so if anyone uh, has an issue for us to address there, uh, you know, please let me know and I'll, I'll bring it up with the executive committee. I think with that, uh, thank you, Kevin, for putting things together. Thanks, Rudy, Eric, for contributing. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Alex Papa for, for joining us uh, to work on the, the video demos. I'll look for some emails coming from them in the near future. And then as we put things together with the, uh, the annual meeting, uh, we'll certainly keep you updated. But uh, our next community call, in fact, will, will not be held. It's uh, taking place during the community meeting uh, in, or the foundation annual meeting in, in Ann Arbor. So uh, next month, it'll be in person. Uh, and hopefully we'll all see you there. Thank you.